Jeff Keighley is a good guy. He's done a lot for the games industry. He's a friend of Kojima's, so he's a friend of mine. But Jeff, I've got a bone to pick. Where is the best co-op games category for the Game Awards? Are you telling me the multiplayer section is supposed to cover our beloved subgenre? You know what, no. I refuse to accept this disrespect. As the co-op bros, we will take a stand and give you, the people, the co-op category you want and deserve. That's right, we're here today to give you the top 10 co-op games of 2022. With our crowning jewel, best co-op game of 2022, at the end. Now let's talk about conditions. Gabe and I have managed to play a staggering 24 co-op games throughout this year, a personal record. These titles that you see before you are all in consideration. There are mostly full releases here, of course, but also a few early access titles, a couple of large expansions, and one co-op campaign thrown into the lot. We weren't able to get to a few titles that we would have wanted to, but look, we're a small operation and we're being upfront about it. Show some respect in the comments. So without further ado, let's get into the best co-op titles 2022 had to offer. When making a list like this, you kind of expect the lower games to be the easiest to place, but that couldn't be more wrong. We deliberated a ton on which game deserved this last spot, but ultimately we landed on Rainbow Six Extraction. Yes, it did come out this year, and yes, that feels like forever ago. Extraction really surprised us with how much communication it demanded in order to succeed. You really have to stay frosty, as this is very much a tactical co-op game. Every enemy here can take you out in just a couple hits, so you have to plan your assault meticulously. Whether it's using the helpful drone bot, which I'm pretty sure we call Drony, or other abilities from the roster of operators. The lack of content at launch and its repetitive gameplay bring down the experience as a whole, which is why it isn't higher on this list, but we still think it's worth playing, especially if you can check it out on Game Pass. The premise of Escape Academy, a game put together by real world escape room makers, just doesn't sound appealing to me in the slightest. But in practice, Escape Academy is easily one of the best co-op puzzlers we've played. And that's coming from two guys who aren't entirely enthused about the subgenre as a whole. What Escape Academy does better than its contemporaries sounds counterintuitive. It doesn't necessarily build itself up as a purely co-op experience. This game is originally intended as a single player game with co-op added on. So most puzzles don't need that perfect communication. It just helps to have two heads working on the same puzzle together. And with the ability to seamlessly switch between split screens, you're able to divide a puzzle's information between the two people with ease, and the potential frustration is erased. It's not perfect, but it's really good and worth a quick playthrough on Game Pass. Not every game needs to have a crazy premise, endless build diversity, or even be 30 hours long. Sometimes a nice three hour nostalgia filled adventure with everyone's favorite crime fighting turtles is more than enough. Shredder's Revenge is one of the most fun co-op games of the year, full stop. Everything from the music, to pummeling goons with our supers, and all the fun retro animations make up for the brief campaign. Playing around with the different characters until we landed on our perfect duo, April and Donatello, was also a ton of fun. Sure, it may not be the most cooperative game on this list, but it's simple to play and it's yet another game on Game Pass. Half this list is on Game Pass now that I think about it, so shout out to Uncle Phil, am I right? Anybody here surprised to see us talking about the new Monster Hunter expansion? Nobody? Guy in the back, you can put your hand down. We all know you're just joking around. Okay, good, because you all should know by now that if there's a Monster Hunter game or expansion releasing in a year, it's gonna deserve a top 10 finish. Once again, we're here to remind you that this franchise is always a great time with friends, and the Sunbreak expansion continues and elevates that trend. Each iteration, it gets a little bit easier to play together, and that's no exception here. Plus, there's more customization available to further diversify your builds with your squad. It's just co-op wins all around whenever you get a Monster Hunter title out. The expansion is a little top-heavy with repeats from the base game, but eventually picks up the pace with some new top-notch monsters. Monster Hunter Rise got second place last year on our top five list, and its expansion keeps the good times rolling at our number seven spot. 
This one should really come as no surprise considering we haven't stopped blabbing about it all year. After finally getting our hands on it, I can officially say Warhammer 40k Dark Tide is an absolute blast to play. When the horde is rushing, the lead's flying, and the soundtrack is pumping, man, it is a great symphony of co-op action. And yeah, the soundtrack alone kinda makes this a must play. Like the best co-op shooters, Dark Tide requires a ton of communication, especially since everyone has a specific class and role to play. You're always encouraged to stay with the group too since you're pretty much a goner if you try to lone wolf it. And though some technical hiccups and optimization issues hold it back, we think this has the potential to be one of the best co-op shooters we've played. The key word there being potential. There's a lot of work to be done when it comes to progression and cosmetics, but with the core gameplay being as satisfying as it is, it probably deserves a spot on this list. It's also on PC Game Pass, making it easier to overlook some of those issues. Thanks again, Uncle Phil. Fun factoid for you, Merriam-Webster's word of the year for 2022 is gaslighting. I can say I experienced gaslighting when reviews came out for Gotham Knights because holy bible Batman did the industry get this one wrong. Gotham Knights was a great co-op game. I go back to that first trailer we saw over two years ago. The trailer went out of its way to highlight the two player experience. From the beginning, this was intended to be a simple yet fun action game with your friend. But so many of the reviews we watched and read failed to mention the co-op as a highlight of the experience. It's just disappointing because the open world pacing, ability based combat, and E3 like moments clearly unlock what the developers intended here when played with a friend. Plus the story may be predictable, but the individual characterization was surprisingly good. So if you can look past the 30 FPS and the lackluster reviews, we think you have a very good co-op game waiting to be played underneath it all. Now that we're talking about some heavy hitters, let's shout about Ship of Fools. Oof, talk about a game punching above its weight. Ship of Fools is a co-op roguelike that really hit us by surprise. It perfectly throws the line between being accessible while still having deep roguelike systems. There's a decent amount of build diversity with all the different characters you can play, the trinkets that amplify their abilities, and the various ship upgrades and ammo types. Battles are a ton of fun as well, with many different enemy types that keep you on your toes, and you also have to balance keeping the ship in one piece. This game had us at the edge of our seats. It can get super chaotic, but it's immensely satisfying to beat a boss by the skin of our teeth. It's a pretty brief game, at most 8 hours to complete, and there's currently no end game, but I'll tell you what, the second they drop some DLC, I know we'll be diving back in right away. Buckle up boys because I'm about to summarize our longest review ever in about 45 seconds. Elden Ring is a masterpiece, easily deserves game of the year, and once again redefines open world games like Breath of the Wild did five years ago. And so, knowing that, of course I'd recommend you take advantage of playing it with your friends, right? I do, I think playing this with your friends is 100% worth it. Exploring this world with your buddies is great. There are a ton of fun surprises to discover, moments you'll never forget, tense fights that will push your friendships to the edge. And the build diversity you can take advantage of is top notch RPG stuff. I did love playing this with Christian and Gabe, but it is by no means a five out of five co-op experience. Elden Ring pushes the argument of shared progression in a Souls-like way over the edge and finally shows its shortcomings. Expecting your group to play this entirely together would mean playing it not just once, but twice or three times over, and that is simply too much. This world is too big and the lack of shared progression does take away from the experience, it's as simple as that. So here's how I'm going to end this and pose that Elden Ring deserves the number 3 finish. Play Elden Ring with your friends, but don't expect to play it all together. Have those shared moments, but also explore it on your own when not together, and I think you're going to have a great time. Or just play the incredible PC mod that nullifies everything I've said and makes this the best co-op game of the year. Similar to Elden Ring, there is so much to talk about when it comes to Nobody Saves the World. Did I just compare Elden Ring to a little indie game from the makers of Guacamelee? Yes, I did. And I do it again because this game is just brilliant. I mean, where do I even start? Nobody Saves the World is a co-op dungeon crawler where you and your friend can chase shift into 15 or so different forms. Each form has their own progression paths, unique traversal, and special moves. 
Where it really starts to get crazy though is when you start mix and matching moves in order to create a truly broken duo like say our zombie and necromancer pairing. When we brought these two out and we're turning hordes of enemies into zombies and demons and just completely obliterating bosses like this, man, it was just too much fun. And everything surrounding the combat is just as good. The tone of the game is hilarious with some really standout writing and character designs, but it's really the gameplay loop that works so well in co-op. It's a ton of fun to complete dungeons together while leveling up characters and therefore unlocking new characters and new abilities to mix and match. Listen, I could talk about this game all day, and of course this game is on freaking Game Pass. Okay, okay, just cut me off here, or we'll never get to the number one co-op game of the year, bro. And the winner of the Co-op Bros Best Co-op Game of the Year award goes to The Rising. Yes, an early access game. But before you all pull out the pitchforks and the torches, let me just say, this feels like anything but an early access game. If you've played it, you would know. But ignoring that and charging through any comments, I can confidently say this is one of the best co-op games we've ever played and reviewed for the channel. That's a big deal. There is such a compelling survival gameplay loop here that is overwhelmingly enhanced by having a group working together. At the heart of this is two things, base building and boss hunting. You work together to create the most efficient workshop back home as you can so that you can continue to hunt bosses, which gives you upgrades back at the base, which allows you to hunt more powerful bosses, and back and forth the pendulum goes. But the gameplay underpinning that loop is anything but a sideshow. We were pretty sure the Achilles heel to be rising, or in this case maybe the garlic, one might say, would be the combat. It usually is for survival games. But V Rising has such an easy and intuitive spell casting system that helps you diversify your builds without even having to try too hard. Plus the bosses in this game are all so varied that you have to be able to adapt as quickly and as easily as possible. And did I mention that there are like 30 to 40 bosses in the early access window? Yeah, maybe those pitchforks aren't looking so sharp anymore now are they? Overall, we can't say enough good about V Rising. It legitimately changed how we look at early access titles and will forever be at the top of our survival co-op tier list. If you haven't played it, I deeply consider playing it as soon as possible. And if you're waiting for 1.0, we're right there with you. I expect this isn't the last time we'll be seeing V Rising on a list like this. And there you have it, our top 10 co-op games of 2022. As Andrew said at the top, we played a total of 24 co-op games this year, and making this list of 10 was not easy, trust me. There were a lot of games that we considered, but alas, they couldn't all make the list. So here's three games we'd like to give some flowers to. Consider them our honorable mentions. Sniper Elite 5 is one we really deliberated on. Ultimately, we gave the number 10 spot to Extraction because we felt that game demanded more teamwork opposed to Sniper Elite 5. But honestly, Sniper Elite 5 is a good co-op game. It's very much a no-frills experience for better or worse. Popping Nazi heads through the ridiculous headshot cam never got old, but in the end, we were left wishing the game was a bit more ambitious. This year's Witch Queen expansion for Destiny 2 was the first expansion to bring us back to the game, and that deserves a ton of credit honestly. It didn't end up on our list because you can think of this experience as two halves. The first half is a campaign on regular difficulty. It was fine, story was kinda cool, but we rarely felt like we were really working together. Now the legendary difficulty is a completely different story. It really pushes you to work together and makes all the puzzles and challenging encounters way more impactful. Take it from two lax Destiny players, Witch Queen was a great excuse to return to the game. Lastly, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is one we were really excited about. We had a blast playing Borderlands 3, and the create your own class idea for this one seemed really, really cool. Sadly, the class system didn't live up to its potential, and ultimately we felt this spinoff didn't evolve the Borderlands formula quite enough. The D&D setting was great though, and it definitely had better writing than previous games, which were kind of trash in that department at least. So if you're looking for a by the numbers looter shooter with a fantasy aesthetic, this could be for you. Bonus round here, I gotta give a shout out to the number one hidden gem of the year, Ryan's Rescue Squad. It may not be a top 10 co-op game, but you know what, maybe the real game of the year were all the friends we made along the way. Close us out bro. Thank you guys so much for watching our top 10 co-op games of 2022. We're really proud of this list and the work we've done this year. And if anything we've done throughout the whole year has helped you and your friends, 
We'd really appreciate your support by subscribing or liking the video, following us on any of our socials, or checking out our very first merch line. We're still pumping out content on an almost weekly basis as this year closes out, so stay tuned. We'll catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Bros.